If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies And if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom A saving He's a prison shaking savior If you got chains He's a chain breaker We've all searched for the light of the day In the dead of found ourselves worn out from the same old fight We all run into things we know just ain't right There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker Somebody testify If you believe it If you receive it If you can feel it Somebody testify, testify Welcome to our Saviors Lutheran Hastings. We're so glad that you can join us today. Uh, if you've been with us before, welcome back. And if this is your first time, we're so glad that you're with us. Please join me in a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, your love changes our lives for the better. Help us to experience your love now as we worship you. Amen. We're going to take a moment for confession of our sins and then the uh, hearing of the words of forgiveness. Please join me in a word of prayer. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'm going to take a moment of silence to offer up the chance for you to um, confess your sins to the Lord quietly, and then I will speak the words of corporate confession after that, followed by the words of absolution. Gracious God, have mercy on us, we confess, that we have churned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you. 
and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our Gospel scripture for today is from the Gospel of Luke, the 13th chapter. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. 
And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of our Lord. I invite you to pray with me. Dear Lord, I thank you that as you noticed the woman in the synagogue that morning, her who had suffered 18 years of pain, we thank you that you notice us in our daily lives, in our pain, our loneliness, our disappointment, as well as in our joys and happiness. In essence, you notice us all the time. And we thank you that you are there in our lives, leading us forward always. Let us trust in you. Amen. I love reading gospel stories like the one we have this morning. For one, the writer Luke tells the story in such a way that I can picture it, how it all happened in my mind, and then secondly, we get another glimpse into Jesus and how he related to people during his journey here on earth. So let's look again at what is happening in today's story. The first thing we learn is that Jesus is teaching. This means that he is explaining the scripture of the day to his listeners. Since it is the Sabbath, there are many people there, for no one is working. So far, it's all pretty normal stuff. But then there's this woman, a woman who has been suffering. For 18 years she has been suffering, not able to even stand up straight. So let's think about this for a moment. In Jesus' time, people were not very mobile, meaning the basic person did not go on trips or vacations. They did not usually move away or go start a business elsewhere. Thus, we can pretty easily understand that everyone in the synagogue knew this woman. And they knew that she was afflicted and couldn't stand up. They knew her issues, and after 18 years, they, they, nor her, were expecting anything to change. Yet that day, things did change, for Jesus was there. As we read, the woman did not ask Jesus for healing. She did not approach him. She did nothing other than walk through the doors of the synagogue. But he did something. Jesus called her over to him and then declared, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. And then he touched her, and she was free. And she knew it immediately, for she stood up, an impossibility a moment before. And so she started praising God. What a great story! What a miraculous moment. Everyone must have been celebrating with her. Their neighbor... For after 18 years, she's freed, she's healed, she's been made whole. Oh, oh uh, wait, that's right. There were other humans there. Someone had to have an issue, didn't they? People can't simply rejoice, can they? No. The synagogue leader spoke right up, and with indignation too. Obviously, his pieties were being affronted. The man's ideas of how others should act, and in this case not act, were being knocked down, cast aside, and nobody seemed to care. This was not right. God would not be pleased, for the leader was not pleased at all. Healing was work. This man Jesus had healed on the Sabbath and in the leader's synagogue to boot. 
Well, this past Wednesday in May morning devotion, the daily devotional based, was based upon Dietrich Bonhoeffer's writings. Each day you're given a scripture and then a quote from Bonhoeffer, which is followed by some thoughts by the devotional writer. Just so you know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German Lutheran pastor and theologian ministering and writing as a citizen of the Third Reich before and during World War II. During World War II, he was arrested, imprisoned, and ultimately executed as a member of a resistance group that had tried to assassinate Hitler. On Wednesday, I started by reading Romans 12.10. Love each other like members of your family. Be the best at showing honor to each other. Then that day's quote came up from a book that is compiled of Bonhoeffer's writings that were uh, taken out of prison entitled Letters and Papers from Prison. He wrote, I told him in no uncertain terms what I thought of people who can be very hard on others and make grand speeches about living dangerously and then crumple up themselves under the slightest test of endurance. After that quote, Charles Ringma, the devotional writer, then shared these thoughts in accompaniment. And I'm going to read them. It is easy to be hard on others and gentle on ourselves. We thus place ourselves in a position of strength and power and run the risk of downgrading the efforts, value, and personality of the other person. At the same time, we make ourselves to be better than we in fact are. This approach needs to be reversed. This does not mean that we put other people on pedestals while we downgrade ourselves. Rather, we need to be exacting with ourselves regarding our integrity and motivation, and very generous in ascribing the best of motivations to the actions and efforts of others." End quote. This devotional struck me for how it highlights the way that we humans too often deal with each other out in the world, but also way too often here in Christ's community, the church. It is easy to be hard on others and gentle on ourselves. We humans love to hold others to a different standard than we hold ourselves, even as we claim that what we do is necessary and not necessarily in need of standards. The synagogue leader in today's reading from Luke is putting an unneeded and almost unbearable burden upon the people by his interpretation of the commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In the synagogue leader's way of thinking, the injunction against work on the Sabbath that helped make up the Talmudic teachings was more important than the woman's physical healing and very life, even as he cared for the lives of his animals upon the Sabbath day. The man is following the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. Jesus talks about the woman being bound for 18 years by Satan. But we can also see that the synagogue leader himself is also bound. He is bound by the false pieties, the outward acts that he thinks divine as define his religious devotion to God. In this way of thinking, the man has forgotten what Jesus says in Mark 2, verse 27. The Sabbath was made for humanity, not humanity for the Sabbath. Meaning when God gave us the Sabbath, it was to be a day in which a person could find rest, healing, and a time away from work in which to honor God. It was not to be a day of enforced religious work based upon false actions. It was not to be a day to keep a woman enslaved in her infirmities for even one more hour than necessary, simply because the synagogue leader's Synagogue's leader defined Jesus' actions of healing as work. No, Jesus had come to show that there was a different way, God's way, and not humanity's interpretation of God's way, but truly God's way, shown us in the person and actions of his Son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus brings freedom, freedom from our sins by his gift of salvation, but also freedom from our own 
and other people's false truths and standards and decisions and judgments and, well, everything else we humans can dream up to keep each other down and bound and enslaved in sin. No matter how often we declare someone else unfit to be a part of Christ's church or unworthy of being a brother or sister in Christ or un anything else, because we've decided so or we have judged thusly, we must be aware, for Jesus is aware. Jesus is watching whether we love each other and try to be the best at showing honor to the other. Jesus is watching and waiting for us to live out his call in our lives, to love one another as he has first loved us. Why does Jesus care so much? He cares because he is the one in his death and then resurrection to new life who says to each one of us, woman, man, child, you are set free from the sins that bind you. Live in the freedom of the Sabbath that I give to you. Live in my love. Live in my salvation. Live and be free. Live and show the world the freedom that I give. Live in God's freedom. Amen. earth 
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Will be forever. Let us confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Jesus, you noticed the woman who had been suffering for 18 years, and then you freed her from her physical bondage. And we know that you do the same for all of us who are suffering spiritual bondage because of our sins. Remind us each day that you not only notice us, but that your love is constant and real. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give to you all whom are struggling with issues of health, be them physical, mental, or spiritual. We ask for your healing presence with Judy and her husband Rob, Del, Janelle, Mary Lou, Gordon, John, Joe, Chris, Karen, and Nancy, and all others whom we hold in our hearts. We also ask that you give your comfort and peace to the families of Judy Hemp, Bob Schutz, and Juanita Hoffman, as each of them walk their journey of grief, as they miss their loved one who has died, give them your solace in their sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator of all, we need you in these days of both destructive weather events and destructive human events that change and end lives. We pray for hard and hateful hearts to be melted and transformed by you. We pray for prideful and selfish egos to be humbled and transformed by you. We pray for scarred and hurt souls to be healed and transformed by you. We pray for your loving and transformative presence in our church, our community, our state, our nation, and our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, lead us into our daily lives, guiding us in our thoughts, words, and actions, that we might serve you, share your love, and shine your hope into the world. We give to you, O oh God, all of these for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and mercy. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm so glad that you've been able to join us here at our Saviors in Hastings for worship today. Uh, if you have questions of what's coming up at our saving, uh, up at our Saviors, or any other um, questions uh, and want to contact us, please visit us at 
O-S-E-L dot org. You can also visit us at our web uh, Facebook page. And uh, we welcome you anytime in our doors and within our walls in Hastings, Minnesota. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord by loving your neighbor. Amen. Again, we're so glad that you've joined us today, and we welcome you back next week. Bye-bye. life and